Augmented reality is a way to make software understand what it's looking at. We take a camera feed and we can actually understand what you see and change it. We can add things, we can remove things. It's really an opportunity to change the way people see things, but also to change the way people learn. I'm Brian Mullins, I'm the founder and CEO of Daiquiri, and this is Gaia Dempsey, and we create augmented reality software. I went to the Merchant Marine Academy and I studied mechanical and electrical engineering, but my first job out of school was in simulation, and I was doing um, full ship simulation, and it's all these wraparound projection screens, so you could walk out on the bridge wing of the ship and, and see the ocean out in the distance, and see other ships going by. One of the problems is when you're docking, you use binoculars to kind of look the last 50 feet. If you point binoculars at a screen, you, you just see big pixels. You know, how do you have a pair of binoculars that could look at a screen and amplify what you see and understand what you were looking at? That gave me my first taste of what augmented reality was. I was really impacted by the idea of mixing the real and the virtual. You needed about $20 million worth of hardware to do it in a big lab setting. When the iPhone 4 came out, I, I realized there was an opportunity to do this with what was in your pocket. Back in the Stone Age, when we were using QR codes, I wanted a name that had QR in it, and I'd also read an article that said if you had five characters or less, more people were likely to go to your website. So I wrote this script that looked for all the website names that were still available that had five characters and QR in the name and I thought we, I could build a brand around Decker. When I was putting together the team, I would show people a demo, and it had this plane that flew around the QR code, really choppy style, low resolution. Some people say, oh, this is gonna change everything, I gotta be a part of that, and I hired everybody who did that, ever. And I showed it to Gaia, and she said, oh my God, that's gonna change everything. For me, augmented reality is such a magical medium. I have a literary background. I also studied architecture and urban design. That kind of spatial training was really great for AR. They say that a startup requires a designer, a hacker, and a hustler. Well, an augmented reality startup also requires an anthropologist, a science fiction author, and a vision scientist. You need a lot more technical chops behind you. There's a lot of really exciting things going on in education. We've just come out with an application called Anatomy 4D, and it allows you to explore the human body in a learning environment that's completely three-dimensional. You're able to move through different body systems, the skeletal system, the gastrointestinal system, the circulatory system, um, the neural system, and you actually can turn them on and off and so you can see how they are positioned in relationship to each other. You can walk around the model and understand it from different perspectives. There's an application concept that you could see from the eyes of a snail. A snail sees really, really, really slowly. So the frames change incredibly slowly over time. And you end up with this world that is multiple exposures. There's a story about Monet that he actually, later in life, due to his macular degeneration, he could see ultraviolet. And that changed the way that he painted. And so to be able to put on Monet's eyes and actually have that as part of what you're learning, I think is really interesting. And people are excited about the potential for education, not just for anatomy, but for all different kinds of complex systems. When you're shopping for furniture in your home, people are generally really not that good at visualizing the future. And augmented reality helps you make that kind of decision by letting you view objects in your home before you decide to buy them and say, okay, this couch, looks great with my carpet, or I want to buy this painting, or I want to flip through different paintings until I find just the right one that fits with my living room. We always looked at it as a platform, you know, and as a medium. You know, I was inspired by uh, WordPress or YouTube, where they'd made a system that let you create your content and then publish it without thinking about the technology. We wanted to do that for augmented reality and, and for a medium to actually get used, whether it's an artist or a designer or, or an engineer or an architect, we need to get the tech out of the way. Vox Summit is uh, bringing together a hundred of the most interesting minds from different disciplines to talk about the future of augmented reality uh, and looking at it from an art and design standpoint versus looking at it from a pure technology standpoint. I think this is the beginning of something very big and largely very good.
People certainly had these ideas long before Daiquiri was around. When film first came out, people were showing trains going by. People would line up to see it, and nobody even had a concept in their mind of what that meant. There's this famous reel-to-reel -reel movie of a group of people watching this movie for the first time, and the train's coming at them, and they literally get out of their chairs, because there's no concept in their brain of a train coming at them where they don't get out of the way. AR's exactly the same. People see it for the first time, they don't even know how to understand what they're seeing at first. But the truth is, it's a medium just like film. And, and if we just showed trains going by, it, it's just a gimmick. It's showcasing the technology. It wasn't until somebody figured out that you have to tell a story that it became a medium that you could use. So what they filmed next was stage plays. And they did it from the same fixed perspective. And they were just end to end, here's a stage play. And it was totally lame, and it didn't last very long. And then somebody figured out you could tell a story in a whole different way, and film became powerful because of that. With augmented reality, the user gets to control the perspective, and now they're playing a different role because of it. And we figured out that with the user changing their own perspective can shape the story, it can expose things that they're more interested in, and actually drive them to engage, but reward them with the content that they're most interested in. It's not just making a game or, or a program. You're looking at a way to transform the way people look at information, the way people use information. What augmented reality really is, is a way to take the internet out of the computer and put it in the real world. So anything you could do on the internet, now you can do in the context of the real world. You know, five years from now, it's gonna be this whole new class of experience, and you won't be able to imagine a world without augmented reality, but this is already happening today. You can pick up a magazine on the newsstand and have the cover come to life in augmented reality. You know, 18 to 24 months from now, you won't need an image target. You'll just be able to move your device around the room. The device will understand the shape of the room and where things are. That's definitely gonna be a tipping point for augmented reality and allowing us to move more content into more places and continue the experience away from the page.